Good morning. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is Tuesday the 3rd. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the Book of Mormon. It is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, and behold, this is the whole meaning of the law, every whip pointing to that great and last sacrifice, and that great and last sacrifice will be the Son of God, yea, infinite and eternal. Alma chapter 34, verses 10 and 14. <clears throat> a universal fall required a universal atonement. The atonement of Jesus Christ is infinite in that it is timeless. Adam and Eve and their children were taught to repent and call upon God because of an atonement that would be made some 4,000 years later. The atonement is infinite in that it engages and overcomes the most universal of all eternal roadblocks, physical and spiritual death. The atonement is infinite in that it stretches well beyond this world, for Jesus is the creator and redeemer of worlds without number. What he creates, he redeems. Finally, the atonement is infinite and eternal in that Jesus is an infinite and eternal being, the only one capable of facing the assaults of Gethsemane, the agony of the cross, and death itself emerging victorious okay. from all of them. Okay, today is Helaman chapter 8, and in this, um, some of the people who are watching Nephi, they begin to say, hey, he's talking bad about our laws, aren't you going to seize him? I'm not going to seize him, but you guys should seize him. Take him before the judges so we can earn some money. Typical. Um, and some of the people are like, shut it, leave him alone. He's a good man. Like, what has he done? He hasn't done anything. And so many people were on this side of it that the corrupt people started to fear. And so they just kind of hushed up for a minute. Seeing this, Nephi continues on and he talks about, um, uh, Abraham, Moses, Zenus, Zenic, Isaiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lehi, and Nephi all testified of Christ. And then he says, to prove it to you, I'm going to tell you that your chief judge has been murdered. I'm going to tell you how and who and where you can find him. Um, so that's basically this chapter. The teachable verse that I chose is verse 7. Uh, and it came to pass that thus they did stir up the people to anger against Nephi and raised contention among them. For there were some who did cry out, Let this man alone. For he is a good man, and those things which he saith will surely come to pass, except we repent. And I wasn't quite sure what my statement might be, but I felt like this was my teachable verse, because even if you don't agree or live the way that he's living, when you stand up for right, your heart is in a teachable place. Even if, let's say, you know, you once were a follower of Christ, let's say some of these people were, and you're not living the way you should, you know, you got a wife and a concubine maybe, or you you just living with your girl or something, or, you know, you're drinking and whatever, not really living by the law of chastity or the law of word of wisdom or anything like that, but you still stand up for the right. You... You know, your heart's still in a teachable place when you stand up for right. So that's kind of kind of my statement there. Let's get into the commentary. Okay. Okay. For verse 4. 14, he lifted up the brazen serpent. Nephi had centuries before made reference to this prophetic use of an emblematic sign of the Messiah to come. Alma, as well, had taught the improvised Zoramites, nope, impoverished Zoramites, about this symbolic event in the ministry of Moses and how it pointed to Christ. 
all the Nephite prophets had access to this account through the brass plates of Laban. Now, Nephi commands the recalcitrant people of his day to open their eyes and look upon the Savior, the source of all redeeming blessings. Precisely the sentiment that Alma had taught his grandfather he Precisely the sentiment that Alma had taught his grandfather Helaman decades earlier, using the words, see that you look to God and live. All right. The day of judgment for verse 25. To willfully reject the word of God is to invite certain wrath upon our heads in the day of judgment. If we become selective in keeping the commandments, knowing that they are true, we reject the word and rebel against God, thus exposing ourselves to the inevitable consequences of the justice of God. Oh, there you go. That's, we invite certain wrath upon our heads. Okay, fine, I'll repent, okay? Gee, they say it so bluntly sometimes and so just like... Anyways. Uh, Nephi follows the promptings of the spirit. He announces the assassination of the chief judge and names the perpetrator. Such shocking news would have caught his dissenting listeners off guard by providing a verifiable test of Nephi's prophetic gift. And we will get into that tomorrow. All right. Let's do our daily reading on prayer. Um, crikey, where are we at? 45, 46, 47, day 247. I gotta fix my calendars. All right, day 247, Carl Fred Broderick, helping each other along the way. Therefore, care not for the body, neither the life of the body, but care for the soul and for the life of the soul. And seek the face of the Lord always, that in patience ye may possess your souls, and ye shall have eternal life. That's D&C 101, 37-38. I have thought about these words, to seek the face of the Lord always, that in patience ye may possess your souls and have eternal life. For me, this translates into striving each day to become better. To be worthy, to seek the face of the Lord, each new day gives us many opportunities. How wonderful it would be to live so that we could be the answer to someone's prayer. I am glad that we are taught weekly in our meetings and are reminded continually of the things that will help us in our life, such as daily prayer and daily study, for I believe that it is through our daily actions that we are seeking the face of the Lord. Another key word in that scripture for me is patience. Since perfection is building slowly as we go on from grace to grace, we are all striving to be on the straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life, but we each are in different places along the route. As we help each other along the way, we also help ourselves, for we really cannot be exalted alone. Okay, that was Helaman chapter 8. And tomorrow we do Helaman chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Let's end it with a read it, do it. Helaman chapter 8, verse 7. When Nephi is standing on the garden tower, some raise up in anger against his words. Others cry out, let this man alone, for he is a good man. What would you have done? Be a prophet defender. It's not a bad one. Okay, that is all for today. We will see you tomorrow. Gotta go back to work. All right.